So our project was an adjustable climbing wall. My name is Eddie. I was a computer engineering, and I was the lead, or yeah, I was the leader of our project. Um, hi, I'm Nkosi. I'm the mechanical engineer on the project. Hi, I'm Mo. I was the electrical engineer on the project. All right, so, so we'll be going over the background and motivation, the project criteria and objectives we have for this school, or for this project. Uh, then we'll talk about the mechanical, electrical, and software design of this. And then we'll go on to the parts and budget uh, and our final system, show you a little demo of it, and then conclude with uh, some future work. So again, the background motivation was mainly because of the lack of access I had to a climbing gym. Uh, I was going maybe two to three times a month, but I was still paying that heavy uh, monthly premium for that access and just I wanted something that I could work around my schedule and just be able to climb when I when I have time. So in order to do that the solution was to create an affordable and uh, efficient climbing wall that was just as strong and had similar or the same holds that the climbing gym had and we wanted to have uh, similar features as a gym where you can have uh, preset LEDs or make your own and have the adjustability uh, to make it harder or make it easier based off whatever you want to train on. Target audience still the same. We're, we're targeting intermediate and advanced climber. Uh, they tend to, to invest in the in this a lot. They for a lot. They will improve their strength and their technique, and they should be able to do that by doing by having the uh, climbing wall at home. So they can do it every day. Yeah. So we also wanted to target mainly like uh, at home use, not really gym purposes. Uh, the because the whole goal is to be uh, affordable, and we didn't want to tax a heavy premium for this product. So uh, just anyone who wants to climb on their own, and we'll pass it over to Nkosi for the mechanical design. So with our final design, um, it's made out of wood that Eddie cut and I cut the board out. Um, so it consists of support beams onto which um, some stepper motors are placed with um, spools on them, which are 3D printed. Um, then there's the ankle wall, which is 14 by nine inches, and it sits on some hinges. And then there are a bunch of LEDs um, 45, 45 that uh, that can turn on and then there's rope that the motors can spool in and out. And so with the board itself, um, there are 3D printed um, climbing holds that are based on models of actual wall climbing holds. So, for a full-size version, these holds would be <coughs> modular because they're the same type of holds as you see in like uh, wall climbing gyms. The hardware arch architecture is still the same. We use the Nixon uh, type of display and the Arduino microcontroller uh, to control the LED matrix uh, and, <coughs> and 45 LED light. And we still use two five volts to control the LED and the electric motor. Uh, the motor driver to control the motors. The, that's it. Yeah, so this was all running on one power supply. Uh, it was about five volts that we needed for both mm -hmm. the drivers and um, the Arduino. And the Arduino powered the 
the touch display. And here's a little uh, schematic that we have for the motors on the left. Uh, this is all connected to the same Arduino. We didn't want to have multiple, and there's no, no point for that. So uh, the left is the stepper motors, and the right is the um, LED matrix design. And then for the software flow chart, we kind of kept it um, the same as our original one. Uh, it starts off by initializing your ports and libraries, and then the main function would sort of loop and constantly be checking the serial monitor for um, some input from the display. And that's how you would know to go to custom, uh, preset, or re record your status. Uh, and then, yeah, the preset's pretty straightforward. You can preset your routes or LEDs. Custom, you have the, the freedom to do what you want with your wall. And record allows you to log your, your climbs. And so with our parts, we have the Arduino Mega, our microcontroller, we have stepper motors, the hinges, the three printed holes were a magnet ball price, um, the wooden board, the string, the touch screen, um, the LED lights, and the LED matrix. And in total, at least by our original or by our estimate, uh, not including any like extra parts to it. Yeah, we had quite a few extra parts to order. That was because uh, either um, we needed more or some of the ones we had broke on us. So there's some replacement costs, but if you were to start from scratch, this is kind of like the base price you would be paying. Some issues we ran into was with the display editor. That was probably the biggest headache we had. Um, so the way, the, uh, the reason they're, it was an issue is because there's a lot of sources out like resources to help you but they're all different so they kind of contradict with each other or uh, you sort of have to stick with one and follow that library but then you sort of like figure out that it doesn't really work the way you want it to work so we just kept having to look into different ways of working with the, the display and here's a little example of how we got it to work so you just send it send a string uh, in this case, it's C colon C LED one two three four followed by a question mark, and our algorithm will first check the first uh, three characters of that string, make sure it's C colon C, and the last character has to be a question mark. If it doesn't meet that requirement, it just sort of deletes that string and ignores it. And, uh, if it does meet it, it'll check the next three characters after that, and. Uh, the, which would be the command. So we have LED for custom, PGV for preset, and A and G to adjust the angle. And then, uh, so that's where it gets the command. And then the value is received from from that um, sort of index to the uh, second to last index. Um, another issue we had was with the, the display size. Uh, we chose to go horizontal and sort of uh, made it a burden for us to have to display the matrix on the display because we didn't have the full vertical um, size. So the solution for that is just upgrade the display to a bigger one or make it vertical. And the last issue we ran into was with the matrix driver. We think we burned out a couple of pins in the driver so uh, we weren't able to get all the LEDs on the actual board to work the way we wanted to. Um, yeah, we didn't have enough time to reorder a new one for the showcase. And so we have a video of our final system. This This is our demo of the, the wall. And this is all working, so it's all controlled by the touchscreen. I first go into custom, and I'll lower the angle to about 67 degrees. After that, I'll bring it back up using the custom feature, back up to 85 degrees. And then I'm gonna mess around with the custom matrix, and to simulate the matrix, we have a little LED display that you can see turning on right now as I press the buttons. And then you can clear it if you want and create a new one.
that's what I mean by it. it's kind of small because of the, the horizontal aspect. Here's the presets. I'm cycling through a few of the few of the easy to hard grades or routes. And then we have preset angles. So the preset angles are 80 degrees, 75 degrees, and 60 degrees. That first one was 70, and then I'm bringing it down all the way down to 60. And then I'm bringing it all the way back up to 85 degrees. And then the last page is just the record your, your climb so you can uh, mark if you completed it or not, and then the number of times you, you, you took. And then we limited that to 30 attempts because uh, I feel like less than 15 would be realistic. So just just in case you happen to go over that. And then edge clear. Yeah, and ideally that the little matrix would be the actual wall, the actual LEDs on the wall. That's our demo. So for future work, if we're building a full scale wall. Um, we have a seven foot by 10 foot board with um, an 11 by 15 matrix of um, light LEDs. And in this case with um, 165 LEDs, we need um, three matrix drivers. And the wall could either be actuated with winch motors, which I looked up some and they can support um, up to a thousand pounds or linear actuated. And in either case, because we're specifying like angle, we'd need an encoder with it. And with these more powerful motors, we'd need a, a more powerful power supply. And so again, the design will work like as we wanted, but with the pre looking at the matrix. We learned how to work and read life and code. This is the one, I think one of the most hard things. Not as we thought was easy. Important of researching and ordering extra component later on, focusing on the deadline so we don't be late. Uh, improvement, we need a different display. Uh, the ordering extra part, uh, the laser part. Yeah, uh, I think it uh, would have been nice to laser cut some parts. Uh, I, wasn't, I think uh, I only found out this semester that we had a laser cutter right right next door. So it would have been cool to sort of get a head start. And like if, if we had known that, we would have probably uh, laser cut our parts rather than you know using our saws and stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's probably like the other improvement. solution when you run out of parts like that with a matrix. Um, so one question is about the safety, like for example if you set an angle and power is lost, what, what would happen to the wall if it's uh, at a particular angle, power supply is lost, like the power outage. Um. Stay at some angle or you call? Or yes, we, we don't have a, a, a calibration method to our uh, code, so it would just stay at the, the angle that the power went out. Oh. Yeah. So. so it's uh, like the code is the same, but the angle is locked? Yeah, they're, they're stepper motors, so uh, I think they're unipolar. Yeah, unipolar motors. So. It's uh, it wouldn't um, it wouldn't move it unless move yeah unless you like force like force when you try to move it. Right. Yeah. And 
Um, also, if we use like either the winch or the linear actuator, there should be enough friction, and we could like implement like extra safety just in case. Yeah, and the the base of the the climbing wall should have a padding for like a real scale one. So if you were to fall, you you'd fall onto the padding and you wouldn't get hit. There's a concern, um, you know, maybe it's a mistake on my part, who was who that you know the resource was anxious. Yeah, I think that if we, I think it'd be nice to mention that in the beginning yeah, of the yeah. uh, planning session, we could have probably used more of like the mechanical aspect with that. For so which one, for like cutting wood board? Uh, yeah, the, the board, and then maybe like, at least because our base and support beams <coughs> were all made out of wood, we could have probably like tried to uh, get the majority of that through the laser cutting. Yeah, but it's, it's yeah, it was, it was still fun cutting it up. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for letting me know. Yeah.